and I will be sending you a link. All right. AC. It's a little loud. <coughs> Get all pops out now. <coughs> I also appreciate the fact that you're wearing a red vest. Yeah, you know, I honestly didn't know if this was like a live thing or not. <laughs> it was cold, and it happened to be a live thing. I was like, oh, I'm wearing red. <laughs> Always happens. Did you wear it on the show? Pardon? Did you wear it on the show? Like one not the specific one. Actually, I bought a red vest that they had me wear, because I bought it myself, and they liked it, so they got one for my double. And then they had to destroy one of them doing a stunt. So then they said, can we buy your old one off of you and we'll buy you a better one. <laughs> so they bought me this one and I had to give him my other one. Uh, <laughs> you know, familiar. Yeah, so I never actually wore it, but it's like the same thing, just a better version of it. Yeah. I just sent you the link through email, so if you want to go ahead and share that to your social media. Sure thing. Did you send it to my Gmail or my Yahoo? Your Yahoo email. And we're getting a lot of likes and loves, and I knew I see our good friend, Carlos Danny. And I think you know Carlos, correct? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, did a YouTube video with him. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. Shout yeah, out to Carlos fun. Danny. I haven't gotten the link yet. Uh, let's see. Control F5. You might have to do a re refresh for your emails. Try it again. Yes. Not a, maybe it went spam or something? No. Send it to the circ at Gmail. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, so we're getting a lot of love right now. All right. Okay. I'm unable to see the love. It just says off air on my side. <laughs> oh, you can see it, Drew. If you want to go to the link I sent you, you're going to see it there. The link you sent to the Gmail? The one I yes, can't I just sent you another email with the yeah. link. Got it, cool. Yes. Opening that now. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Oh, hey, look, it's Facebook. Cool. <laughs> Alrighty, so then I'll share this link. This is the one I share, right? Yes. So a couple shout outs before we get started. Hi Janelle, hi Tim, hi Dusty, Dusty Lee, Tim West, Janelle Bowen, Mark Guzman, Wendy Lee, Mike Inger, Kent Brown, as well as Carlos, and then Maitea Kendall Bross. Hello everyone. <laughs> 
So, let's go ahead and get started. So, everybody, welcome to Rangers Live Chat. You guys know me, Krishna. Um, with us today, we have Austin. Austin, say hello. Hey, guys. As well as Ryan. Hey, guys. And then if you didn't know, Ryan got uh, Visalign, so get him some love and some likes. He's It's his first couple of days, so make sure you guys give him some love and likes. We all had our issues with braces and Visalign, so we know how those pain of having braces are. So with our special guest, we have, hopefully I'm not going to butcher it because the boys are already messing me with my pronunciation of names, um, Brendan Mija, correct? Brendan Mejia. Yeah, yes. So oh, Harry, you... <laughs> oh, it's better than her past. So yeah, well, you're a pass. You're a good. <laughs> so how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. And yourself? We are doing awesome. It's a beautiful Sunday day in Southern California. Mm-hmm. I know a little break from the rain for a little bit. You know, it's <laughs> going to come back for us, but it's all right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, since Ryan's going to only be here with us for a couple of minutes, Ryan, uh, Ryan usually ends the show with our fun questions. So, Ryan, let's go ahead and get started with the show with some fun questions. All right. So, Brennan, I'm going to ask you, your favorite st- ask you for your favorite things. So, what is your favorite food to eat? My favorite food. I love Italian food um, when I'm not being healthy. So, like, she did. <laughs> totally going for the carbs. But uh, when I am trying to be healthy, like, I love smoothies. I, I like cold treats in general. So, like, ice cream over chocolate bars and things like that, frozen yogurt. Um, I don't know. Just something about it, you know? Like, drops your temperature, and then you feel like you're really cold, and then you get to wear jackets, which is rare in this, you know? <laughs> uh, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie? Or movie franchise. Movie franchise? Who? Huh. Huh. You know, I really, you know, Lord of the Rings is really cool. Um, I like the Chronicles of Narnia for the first two movies. You know, a lot of New Zealand themed things. I don't know because we shot New Zealand. I don't know if that's just popped into my mind. But uh, yeah, I like action things in general. So like Dark Knight, um, again, the Avengers, the movie versions. You know, you know, I guess throw that out there. Um, yeah, anything that's really like superhero esque. I like watching movies that are larger than life because the ones that depict reality, they're great for their story and the acting and all that stuff. But I could just live my life for standard, you know, life things. I'd rather see things that are impossible. You know, or mm-hmm. Fan, fantasy realm kind of thing, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is your favorite? Speaking of superheroes, what's your who is your favorite superhero? Superman, for sure. Um, and if you're going like beyond that, if we can jump in like Gohan, Teen Gohan from like the Cell Saga, I don't know if you're allowing me to go to the DBZ side of things. Yeah, anime fan, yeah. All right, cool. Then Gohan, for sure. I love Vegeta, but yeah. Yeah, uh, Vegeta's adult Gohan, not so much, but when he's a teenager. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your favorite TV show? Uh, the Flash, actually, on CW. I'm actually behind on this current season because I do not have cable, so I missed... Like, I know they have it on the CW app, but uh, I missed the first few episodes they put on it, and now they don't have them up there right now, so I don't want to just start with, like, episodes <laughs> and not know what's happening. So I have to wait. You gotta binge watch. I do. I will. I will. I will, I will do it justice, for sure. You have a favorite cartoon character growing up? Or... Team Go. Going back to him, for sure. Go on? Yeah, Team Gohan. Uh... Yeah, to- yeah, I don't know. Just the whole thing with him not wanting to use, like, to fight because he's more pacifistic as a kid, and then he had to anyway, and he stepped up to the plate. I just really like the struggle with him. Goku was awesome, too, but Goku always wanted to fight. Gohan had more of a heart against it, and he had to be convinced it was for the greater good in a kind of sense, you know? I see. Uh, what's your favorite place to visit, uh, and would you like to visit? Favorite place to visit? Well, New Zealand, when I shot Power Rangers, it was on my bucket list, and that was my first time out of the country, actually, so, I mean, there's this one area in New Zealand where you could literally, like, in a mile radius, you walk one way, it looks like sand dunes in a desert, you walk the other direction, it's like a forest, you walk the other direction, there's a giant lake, so it's like a bunch of different geographical locations all in one afternoon, which is really awesome. Uh, Besides, since I know you like Dragon Ball Z, besides Dragon Ball Z, what other is your favorite anime? Mm, Hunter Hunter was really good. Um, I was watching, what is it called? I'm watching Troll Hunters right now, which isn't technically an anime. Have you seen it on Netflix, though? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm in the middle of that at the moment. Um, Hunter Hunter I watched, it was Yoshi's fault when we were in New Zealand. He got me to binge watch like 100 episodes, which is ridiculous. But uh, that was really good. Um, I've been told to get into Fairy Tale, but it's so long, I don't know if I want to commit my life to it. I just finished Naruto Shippuden, finally, because there were so many fillers. So I waited for those to end before I started watching it. 
Attack on Titan. No, I'm just kidding. I watched Attack on Titan too. Have you seen the live action ones? Yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah, okay. Know. Have you seen the live action Roni Kenshin? Yes. Those were good. I like those. The sword fight was amazing. Oh my gosh. Well, that's my questions to ask you now for our main questions. Sure. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, about myself, well, I am a circus performer. I started circus performing when I was in elementary school, and that's kind of how I fell into performing in general. Uh, <laughs> I never meant to really be a thing, um, but random fun fact, when I was in the circus, I was a little kid, and a manager came to the circus to, like, scout you know, people who are interested in acting. And he actually met me and I was half asleep because I, I was resting between my acts and I was, again, like a child. And I remember afterwards, my dad's like, hey, you should have been more lively, you know, like he could have gotten you into the industry. And I was so sad. I remember I cried a bunch. I was like, I could have been an actor or whatever. T- fast forward like 10 years, I met him again and he ended up becoming my first manager. And we didn't even realize it was the same person until a couple months later. So it's just like how the, everything kind of connects to itself. But, uh, yeah, I don't, that's kind of a fun thing about myself. Yeah. Um, so just to let the viewers know, if you have any questions for us, go ahead and um, leave questions for Brendan in the comments below, and we'll go ahead and read them at the end of the show and have for him to answer. So let's go ahead and play a fun game. We did this with Davi. Davi, tried. Let's see if uh, Brendan could try. Um, you have 30... <laughs> Um, you have 30 seconds. I'll have uh, Ryan with a stop clock. You have okay. 30 seconds to name all the uh, Megazords that were on from your season. Oh my gosh, all of them? I have like a million <laughs> Megazords. So, ready? Wait, wait, wait. To, to clarify, do you mean like the full combined version or like the individual? Individuals. Individuals. Okay. Okay. <laughs> ready, set, uh, go. Go. Plesiozord, Pachazord, Rexy, um... Terrazord, uh, t- uh, Titanozord, uh, Raptorzord, um, Stegazord, Tricerazord, um, what was that one? I already said that one. So many, so many in my head. We had the special one too. What was the purple one from Keel Rieger? The one with the boomerangs. I can't remember. The Plesiozord. Yeah, well, I said Plesiozord. Those are the first ones I said. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm failing this. It's but, okay. Uh, you did much better than Davi, so points eight. on you. You got, you got eight. You got like one. Oh my gosh, did he get his? <laughs> yeah, he's like, I know only, but oh my, Tara, that's another. Like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, it feels like it was a lifetime ago trying to jump into that knowledge. Again. Yes. Yeah. But you did an I'm, awesome job. Well, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, again, with the questions, um, how did you get started with acting? Why did you get in acting in the first place? What made you get motivated into the acting field? Well, okay, so like I mentioned, like circus was my entrance into performing, and uh, I'm really involved in physicality. Like I got my degree in kinesiology. I'm certified as a personal trainer, sports nutritionist, yoga instructor, and all that jazz. So I always liked physical stuff. When uh, I was at my mom's house, I think I was like 15 or 16, and we got a call from this modeling school, which is kind of like a ripoff school, but they're like, hey, you and your sister should come to our school, even though we don't know what you look like, but you guys could do great. And we're like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so we went. And uh, at the school, of course, it's like way overpriced. They didn't really teach you that much, but they did have managers who they paid to come in every other weekend, and they would see you guys, and you'd showcase, and the one I ended up signing with was the guy who met me at my circus that I mentioned earlier. So he liked my look. He's like, Oh, you know, you, you could play like a bunch of different ethnicities and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I'd like to work with you. I was like, okay, cool. So I went with him and I uh, ended up testing out a high school early and I started going to community college part time. And when I was with him, he brought me to an agency. They liked my look and my random ability to talk backwards, which I did in the first episode of like Carly. And, <laughs> and uh, I booked my first theatrical audition out of luck, like for CSI Miami. And then from there, just kind of, I just wanted to do modeling. I was like, modeling is cool. Girls like models, right? Cause I was like doing it for mean reasons at the time. Uh, and he's like, you should try the acting thing. And so I did. And I started actually liking and developing a taste, you know, for the work ethic and it took me a long time to actually believe I could act because I'd always be like, oh, I just want to model. I kind of act. And it was kind of my self-excuse if I sucked. 
like I didn't want to act. So I just kind of used that as a blanket to protect myself. And then I kind of dialed down like, no, I do want to do this. I do have the capacity to do this. And it's such a cool platform um, to use to be able to inspire people and motivate people. And I just love the fact that each day at the office is different and you get to do so many different things and play different characters and fight Megazords one day and fight ghosts in American Horror Story the, the next day. It's like, oh, so... I don't know. So yeah, that's kind of like how I fell in. And now it's kind of just, you know, I keep grinding. In the meantime, I teach yoga and personal training and practice circus skills myself. And then uh, just wait for the auditions. And when they come up, you just put in the work and it's out of your hands at that point. But it's fun. Yeah, Austin I has the next forgot question. about the iCarly thing. I remember yes. reading about that one time. I was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> the first episode, the pilot. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Austin has the next question. Sure. Oh, do I? I do. Um, <laughs> did you know about Power Rangers for auditioning? And um, how did you get the role of Tyler? Yes, I did. I grew up watching Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin, and Zeo, and Turbo, and In Space, all those things. Um, the thing, because I actually auditioned for Samurai before Dino Charge. And at that time, I was really, really into it. Like, the audition process, I was like, I, I want this so bad. And, of course, when you want something really bad, you sometimes don't do as well because you're nervous and I made it to the third audition round. I remember all my friends went to go see Avatar The Last Air Airbender um, when it was in theaters. Oh. Long version. I never saw it, but I heard it was bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they were all going at midnight and I like didn't go so I could prepare more for the Power Ranger callback the next day. And then I didn't get Power Rangers and I was just so mad for a long time and then I didn't even care to look for auditions for Make a Force or anything. And I was working at the San Diego's new, um, as a professional acrobat seven days a week. Oh, wow. And a friend I used to go to acting class with told me, he's like, Hey, I was at an audition and down the hall, they were auditioning for power Rangers. And I went up and told them that you were a circus performer and like, it'd be cool if they wanted to see you. And they did. And I was like, man, power Rangers again, they said no to me last time. And so I ended up getting in contact with them through my agent and uh, I went to the audition. I was kind of like nonchalant, didn't really care either way. I learned my lines and all that, but I was like, yeah, they're not going to take me. They already know who I am. Um, got a call back. Okay, cool. You know, maybe, maybe we'll see where this goes. At the call back, you know, tried a different color ranger. And then I had to do a physical demonstration. So I did some circus handstands and stuff. Got another call back. Okay, well, you know what? Fine. I, maybe this can go somewhere. Probably not, you know, like still self doubt in your head and go again did another handstandy thing and got another call back. I was like, okay, now I'm at the chemistry read. This is a 10 hour audition, oh, wow. Wow. audition against other Rangers. And like, you know, Camille was there and Yoshi was there and Michael was there. I believe Dobby was there too. So basically everyone who made it on the show was there and except James. And uh, so they kept mixing and matching us. I brought like a rainbow of shirts in the car. Cause I think they, I went for black Ranger. I went for green Ranger. I went for red Ranger and, uh, then we all did like group reads together and we had to run like in the parking lot to see if we run heroically. Cause that's a big part oh, wow. of it. They actually filmed us running. And at the end of it, they're like, this is the final audition. So we'll let you know, we'll get back to you guys. Didn't hear anything for about a month. I was like, well, didn't get that job. And uh, then the casting associate, um, she asked if she can come see my circus show at the zoo. I was like, yeah, you can come. I was like, is there any word? Like, do you know if I got it? Do I get to change? Cause I was a, I was a giant koala. Oh, wow. This <laughs> I changed this costume for like a different color kind and she's like you know I, I can't tell you but like you know we hope you get something and then the next week they're like hey we need you for one more audition I was like you guys saw me four times already and three times for Samurai how much more do you need to see of me <laughs> so I was mad and I had to work seven days a week again so I had to drive out in the morning from San Diego to LA and then I had to drive back and I was like this is a waste and my fiance who's my wife at the time Caitlin was in the car and so we get there and I go on the audition and they're like, we need you to do a cold read. And I was like, okay, that's where they just give you like the sides immediately and you have to do it. I'm like, can I step outside and like go over it and, you know, kind of rehearse it? They're like, nope, you got to do it right now. Like, Are you serious? Well, this is going to be the worst audition of my life. And so uh, I do the scene and in the scene, it's talking about like a kid and a mentor and the mentor is like, you must open this box to reveal your destiny. And he actually, they handed me a treasure chest in the audition. Oh, wow. And uh, so I opened the box, and inside of it was a laminated picture of the Red Dino Charge Ranger going, congratulations, Brennan, you are the Red Ranger. Oh, wow. Like, are you serious? Like, really? They're like, yeah. Like, really? Like, so that was worth the drive to uh, L.A. So they lied to me. You must have felt like a kid in a candy store. 
Oh my gosh, speaking of, they gave me this like basket full of red themed candies. Like, <laughs> I don't know, and like they had the Red Ranger from the past season toy because mine wasn't out yet. So it was just ridiculous. It was crazy. And then I, I remember I put on the theme of Power Rangers and played it like 10 times in a row as I drove back to San Diego. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that was that was my, my adventure to being a Red Ranger. And now from like a kid playing Power Ranger pretend and like, you know, kids like, oh, parents always tell you it's a waste of time to watch TV and all that jazz. Well, I mean, I get it sometimes, but like it legitimately got me to be a Power Ranger. So I can't really knock it too much. Um, talking about Power Rangers, uh, Dino Supercharge, how did you work, how did you feel about working on the series as a whole? As a whole, I think it was an awesome experience. Um, because it was in New Zealand, it was so far from like agents and managers. So if things ever went awry, it was harder to like check back and like, is this how it's supposed to be handled? And overall though, the experience again was fantastic. Um, you know, I, I've been on shows prior to Rangers, so I wasn't new to acting at that point, but I was never the star of a show. So getting to be the lead and working with other people and, you know, we we're all equals on set. Like, you know, we, we most of us live together, for crying out loud. Like, I don't know if Davi mentioned that. He was like the only Ranger to not live in the same house. So literally Yoshi, Camille, Claire, Michael and I and James all lived under one roof uh, for oh. most of the eight months we filmed. The girls ended up moving out during the second season at some point. But yeah, so like we worked on set 12 to 15 hours a day together and then we went home and worked out together and then fell asleep and then we got up and did the same thing over and over and over and it's really cool. Um, did you enjoy New Zealand? Yes, I want to retire there. I mean, at some point. It's so gorgeous and there's like no trash. People don't really litter there. Um, there's more sheep than people. The food is high quality. Um there's no poisonous animals except like one spider that they say that you never see ever. Oh wow! So you can like camp randomly and not die by anything. So <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's it's honestly like how they show it in Lord of the Rings and Narnia. It's <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It, it doesn't even do it justice. I don't even know. You have to go. Just do it. Just just go. <laughs> Take a like mini so vacation. Because like so many shows use it, I think, because there's so many different terrains over there too. Yeah, like yeah. Shannara Chronicles is over there right now. Mm -hmm. um, Dragon was filmed there. So it's definitely just, again, like I mentioned, there's so many different geographical locations. Like you could have glaciers and then you could have a forest. Then you would have like, I don't even know, like a desert. And it's, it doesn't even make sense, but it's. <laughs> speaking of New, like, speaking yeah, of New Zealand, um, we know that the next cast is currently there filming their scenes. Yeah. Is there is there any talks about you guys going back in the next 12 months? Well, it talks like to, to do like reunion or something. Um, keep on the DL, but we're just <laughs> saying if there's a possibility. Well, you know, I think there's always a possibility for anything. Jason David Frank said it before, like he always stays quote unquote ranger fit because there's always a chance you may have to suit up again. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's not in my control one way or the other, but if they did ask me, I'd totally be down because again, like Basically, when you're not working, you're like, oh, I want a job really bad. And then when you're working, you're so sleep deprived because like we're working such long hours. You're like, I love this, but I can't wait get, to get back to the States and kind of get back into a normal routine. And then when you're back, you're like, man, I really miss filming Power Rangers. Oh. <laughs> so like, you always want what you don't have kind of thing. So yes. but I definitely, I, I would pick up the mantle again and put on my helmet. Why not? Mm -hmm. So I want to backtrack real quick to when you're talking yeah. about going on auditions for Samurai. I think I can speak for everyone where we say we're glad you didn't get Samurai. That yes. We're glad you got Dino Charge. Yes. <laughs> that for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I watched Power Rangers as a kid basically up until like, I think it was around, what was it? Not, uh, not, I watched past Lost Galaxy. Basically after Lost Galaxy and Time Force, I stopped watching as much religiously. And then when I booked it, I went back and watched old seasons. You know, I watched all of Mega Force to see what the past season did. I watched a bunch of Samurai, and then I went and watched like a couple episodes from a lot of different seasons just to see how the arc kind of developed. I watched all of Kyo Ruger, which is my Super Sentai counterpart. So I really tried to put like you know the effort into understanding and getting back into it because it's one thing as a kid to watch Power Rangers; it's another thing to play a Power Ranger and try to inspire kids through it. Um, yeah, and I watched all the Time Force again just to refresh. Yeah, it definitely but, uh, translated on screen, too, because you seemed really comfortable in your role and you knew what you were doing. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you. So I'm, I'm glad it, it paid off. But, you know, th there's some auditions, like one of my old acting coaches used to say, if there's a character who's really unlike you, you know, you have to really dive deep and 
the psychological side of like if I were to play like a murderer, obviously I don't kill people. So, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, I don't kill people. Maybe you don't know, but <laughs> so <laughs> that would be harder. But like to play Tyler, um, if, if you write NAN at the top of a script, it basic it stands for no acting necessary because Tyler, it's basically just playing an over exaggerated version of myself in a sense. Like I'm really hyper and crazy, and like I love to do random adventures and put people first and all that jazz. And just, I had to hyper focus it into this world, this story that, you know, Chip Lynn created and all the other writers, but it wasn't difficult for me to step into his shoes. It was just wearing a lot of red. But other than that. <laughs> Speaking of roles, uh, can you tell us how did you feel about the whole Tyler and Shelby relationship? Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you call it? Hey, a lot of, uh, Telby, that's what a lot of the yeah, yeah, they were hashtagging it. Everyone on Facebook, and, like, they're like, Telby. I was like, oh, okay. Telby. <laughs> um, you know, Camille's awesome. She's, you know, awesome to work with. She puts in the effort. Um, at first, you know, there's always... The nice thing with Dino Charge, I don't know if he did it with Ninja Steel, but when Chip uh, flew us over, we not only had three weeks of stunt training, but we had about a month of private acting classes that how does act together because it's one thing to know how to act but it's one thing to build chemistry with a team so we actually had to build chemistry and we did different you know acting um just kind of not workshops but just drills and different kinds of studying and working and you know improv and it got to the point towards the second season where chip would give us more leeway to kind of like make the lines our own like oh do you mind if i say it this way and you know, you'd ask, you don't just do it, but it was more and more of a yes, I'm okay with it. I trust that you guys have your characters, you know, basically as good as you'll ever have them at this point. So uh, just developing that with Shelby and the dynamic, um, it was really cool. I think it got better once we moved, once they moved out though, because like being around each other constantly, sometimes <laughs> your best friend, you just, after a while you're like, do the dishes, do you mind? They're like, oh, I'll get them in the morning. And you're like, we all share the same kitchen or like, you know, someone's in the shower too long. All that stuff adds up after a while. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it was, it was good, you know, working with her. Like we are all professional with it. Um, again, just being able to be friends aside from it, it just lent, it, it made it easier to do. You know, it's one thing if you hate the person and you have to pretend to like them. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think, you know, the show speaks for itself. I hope that we did an okay job. Maybe. Definitely. Well, I gotta go, but I'll ask you my, my last question. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is the first season where you had a, well, I don't know it, like a dad and a father ranger. So how was it filming those scenes? Okay, uh, filming with Ruben, he's my dad in the show, was, <laughs> it was really interesting because a lot of people would message me who would watch it who were like family and friends, but they didn't watch all of it. And they're like, why does your dad look the same age as you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't age because of Energems. Oh, well, I want one of those. Where can I get one? Like, so, you know, he was an awesome guy. I actually had to not audition with them, but they had a couple different people going for my dad because he's from New Zealand. So Chip would call me in the office like, hey, do you mind coming up and just uh, standing next to these actors going in for your dad? And uh, just so I go in and he'd ask us random questions like, what kind of music do you like? And then we both answer the question and like just see how our dynamic off of each other play. It was a really, really short chemistry test, essentially. Yeah. And uh, when Ruben got it, it was really cool. And uh, I felt really bad because one of the first scenes we shot together where we throw a baseball back and forth at the end of the episode. I don't know if you guys saw it. Yeah, um, yeah. He looked away for a moment. And it was his birthday. And <laughs> I threw the baseball and I pegged him in the eye. Oh. Like, no joke, because I was bleeding. I got a black eye. He had to get butterfly stitches on. And they put makeup over his eye. But if you go back and watch that episode, like, there are certain parts where his eye looks fine because you don't shoot in order. Oh, wow. And I gave him a black eye, and I felt so bad <laughs> on the show. And I'm changing the color of his eye to my skin tone. I'm just like, oh, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Aww. And I bought him dinner, though, to make up for it. So. Well, that's a good story. Well, we thank you, um, Ryan, for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the baby shower, Ryan. All right, see you guys. See you. Bye. Brandon. See you. Bye. It's very nice meeting you. So the next question is, can you tell us, besides, even though you just told us a behind-the-scenes moment with uh, with Ruben, uh -huh. who played your father, uh, can you tell us uh, uh, something from the behind-the-scenes from your series that you would like to tell us? Yeah, well, uh, let me think for something specific. I'll just start outing random things until something amazing comes to my mind. <laughs> but uh, 
so on the show, obviously, we have stunt doubles. I mean, mm-hmm. regardless of whether we can do the physical skills or not, because Yoshi and I are very physical. Like, he was a stunt man professionally before Power Ranger. Uh, he actually did the, I don't know how much you guys know, but like he was the in-suit ranger mm-hmm. at a lot of cons and things. That they, He was actually hired by Saban to do that stuff. And then he became a Power Ranger, which is really cool. Um, so him and I could do stuff, but because of filming and just time and you know potential of injury, we didn't always get to do our own stunts. So my stunt double... Uh, two of them. One of them, his name was Atsu, and he's Japanese. And it was just so funny, just the transformation they had to put him through to look like me. Okay, because I don't know if you're aware, but Japanese people, my skin tone, they don't really match. <laughs> we could tell. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they gave him a wig, and uh, they had to spray paint him brown, legitimately spray oh, paint him Oh, brown. wow. And it's just like, <laughs> and every time I'd work out, because he'd get mad. He'd go up to me and poke me and go, too much kiniku. Kiniku is Japanese for muscle. <laughs> I got muscular. He had to get muscular. And so just kind of the dynamic. And he was always joking around. But just I have nothing but the highest level of respect for them. And I know some Power Rangers, or not even Power Rangers, actors. Like, oh, I do all my own stunts. Most of them, no, you don't. Like, Jackie Chan, I can believe it. Most others, no, you don't. Like, even if you could do all your stunts, time-wise, and if you ended up hurting yourself, the show has to stop. Because I was told one of the past Rangers, uh, I want to say it was in samurai one of the rangers broke her leg or something and from that seat on she was filmed only sitting down because you couldn't see her cat so it's like you don't the way it affects the show if something stupid happens it's crazy like yoshi and i were practicing um because chips like do some kind of balancing acro trick together for an episode so he was trying to do a hand-to-hand with me where he holds me like this i'm on his shoulders and i jump up and he holds me in a handstand it's called a hand-to-hand and I kind of rushed him to do it. I was like, oh, it's fine. We'll be fine. Let's just go for it at the gym. And he held me, but he started running sideways with me. <laughs> I fell and I, caught, like, I landed on my feet, but because the momentum was going to the side, my ankle rolled and a uh, tendon popped. I, oh. like, it was a, an audible oh. pop. And, and Yoshi was running around. I was like, I broke the Red Ranger. I broke the Red Ranger. <laughs> I was like, no, no, it's fine. But it's really not fine because I can't walk. And it's like, and so I have oh. physical therapy and stuff. And, because of the pain from that, like, oh my gosh, fight scenes, because I still would do some fight sequences, I kept re-rolling it, and, like, I had to do some backflips for a scene for the Princess Andar episode when I was dressed as the prince. Like, when I first walk in, they actually cut it from the episode, but I walk in, and I'm supposed to do a backflip and then run to the guys, like, it's me, guys! And, uh, like, I, like each backflip was getting lower and lower and lower, and Yoshi's like, he has one more in him, like, telling the director each time. <laughs> and, like, I couldn't jump because my ankle... So that was unfortunate, but that was probably like the worst injury I had on set. Was, oh, well, it was my fault. I shouldn't have pushed him to do it, but you know. <laughs> But a good <laughs> thing to remember, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, even Power Rangers aren't, you know, infallible. We can be hurt, so. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really cool, like, just hearing those stories and, like, seeing how close of a friendship you guys actually build while filming together. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I mean, I wish James lived over here because I got along with him super well, too. And, you know, actually, when he came over here, I think it was for Comic-Con, um, he actually stayed with me. Um, at, he crashed at my place, which is cool just oh, cool. to be able to hang out. And, like, that kind of friendship, um, you know, I just I wish it wasn't on the other side of the world so yes. I could see him more. But it is what it yeah, is. That sort of leads us into our next question. Um, do you still talk to your cast? Like, I know you just said about James staying over. You guys lived together when you were in New Zealand. And you just saw Dobby this past week. Yes. You're doing a handstand on him. Yeah, you saw him. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, do you still keep in contact for the most part with most of them? Yeah. Um, well, we actually all have a running uh, group message that we started when, I don't know if it was in New Zealand or when we first got back, but it's titled Taste the Rainbow. So <laughs> <laughs> we just, we'll all randomly message each other something stupid occasionally. And, you know, not a week goes by without us saying something. Not every ranger will always reply to everything, but there is that running dialogue we have with each other. And, you know, like Davi doing that handstand on him is because um, he came with me to career day at a elementary school. I know one of the teachers there because she's in my circus program with me. My circus is a volunteer mm-hmm. program, by the way. It's the world's longest running youth circus. So okay. we have over 400 members this year and like kids can perform with their parents and things. So she invited me and she invited, uh, she invited me last year and Davi, was able to go with me last year. She's like, oh, bring him again if he's free. And so he was, which is awesome. So, you know, like Davi and Yoshi are probably the ones I hang out with more in the States. 
Um, you know, Claire is in LA. She lives close to Davi, he told me. So I'm going to go down and hopefully hang out with both of them sometime soon. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Yoshi, because of the physical stunt side, him and I, again, we just like to train together. But again, he lives in L.A. now. He used to live in Anaheim, so I don't get to see him as much as I would like. But, you know, it is. when we get together, we're all cool. We all hang out. It's like no, no time has passed. You know, we have friends like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly, yeah. Yes. Uh, how do you feel about the Power Rangers fandom and how, how much it's grown and from your experience with now working with the series? What do you think of the fandom? Well, this is the crazy thing because... Although I've been on shows that were quote unquote bigger at the moment, like American Horror Story, I was in season one, Mm -hmm. which you know was like the height of its craziness, and I was in the finale, and I wasn't into social media at that time, so I didn't. I don't think I had a Twitter yet, and I should have have taken advantage of it, but I was like, ah, whatever. Um, But being on a popular show like that, which it's still popular, but it's not like the fandom is like Power Rangers has been going since what 1993, like it's so deeply rooted in what it is like it's a gateway tv show a lot of people say to superheroes and that's what it was for me like i got to play a power ranger i'm hoping next maybe i'll play blue beetle or nightwing or something that'd be so awesome to be like one of those kind of characters you know um so i hope i graduate to a dc character or something i take marvel to shoot but uh yeah i don't know i mean it's the love that they have is just there's a passion for it that transcends you know just a pop culture kind of thing you know, like Power Rangers and Pokemon have been around long enough and they've transcended time to show that they can, you know, like McDonald's. Everyone knows what McDonald's is. Even if people don't know Power Rangers is still on TV, because I get that a lot. Like, oh, you were in the first season? I was like, no. <laughs> you, like, a lot older than I am. <laughs> but uh, they all know what a Power Ranger is. So, like, even if they're not aware that it's still going, then the word Power Ranger or words is synonymous with, you know, a nostalgic kind of feeling. But, uh, you know, being part of that fandom myself growing up, like when I first met, you know, Jason Font and uh, Steve Cardenas and all these other Power Rangers, like even though you know they're actors and like now you're a Power Ranger too, it's still like, I watched you growing up. It's just so cool. I don't know. Kind of yeah, it's really cool. Like it comes full circle. Like yeah. with that as well. Like, oh, you, you saw them. Now you get to actually meet them and be part of what they're a part of. It's, it's crazy. Like just, you know, they're the nicest guys, you know, Steve, when I met him at a, I ran into him a couple times at different conventions, but he always invites me like, Hey, we're all going out after work for food. And I always, <laughs> I'm already planning to go home or something. Cause I was far away from everything. But, uh, and you know, like he offered for me to train with him in LA and like do jujitsu. It's just like that oh, wow. immediate acceptance. It's just so yeah. cool. <laughs> That's sort of leads us to our next question. Um, did you enjoy Power Morphicon 2016? Mm-hmm. And, uh, did you enjoy the other conventions that you get to go to? Yeah, well, Morphicon, the first Morphicon, when we were revealed, like, we didn't get to interact with anyone. We just got to, like, hi, we're on stage, and now we're leaving. Yeah. And just like, how many people there were. I was like, wow, I didn't know this many people still like Power Rangers. Because at that time, I wasn't aware that it was still so big. Um, and then when I got to come back in 2016, I was more aware of it at that point. But then being able to interact with fans, and I don't know, it was just, again, the energy, because... Being a Power Ranger, because you know there's so many of us, it's not the same thing as like being Captain America, like Chris Evans. Like he yeah. is Captain America, so for him, like he can walk anywhere and he's immediately recognizable. For me, like I'll see people look at me like they they think they may have seen me somewhere, or a lot of them are like, "You have a really familiar face. Have we met before? Like, have I seen you?" And I know they've probably seen me on TV, and I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know if we've met." And it's just kind of like it's odd. It's odd, but uh, yeah. I mean, after Morphicon. Um, I've only done one other convention as, you know, a guest because when we were under Power Ranger contract, we weren't allowed to do conventions outside of the ones they sent us to. Um, so I did one in Modesto, which is the only one I've done outside because Ciara had to cancel at the last minute. Ciara, the Yellow Ranger from mm-hmm. uh, Nick mm-hmm. and she she asked me if I could step in for her, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And then I from there, you know, Scott Zillner. Uh, asked me to do another one. So I'm doing one in Pasadena, February 26th. And then now I'm doing another one, March 12th in LA somewhere or nowhere. <laughs> but yeah. So like, it's definitely cool to pick up and like getting to travel to these places and meet fans. And, you know, I'm hoping I get to travel outside of California. Cause again, New Zealand was my first time out of the country. I haven't been to even that many States yet. So I'm hoping to just be able to go abroad a bit more, which would be really cool. And cons are just a great way I've heard to do it. So, uh, yeah. 
and yeah. of course, Rangers Live Chat will be there with you um, on at Pas- Pasadena Comic Con on the twenty sixth. So we'll see you there. Yeah. Um, I do apologize. I just lost all my questions. Um, so what no are worries. you doing now? What are you currently working on? Well, at this exact moment, um, are you familiar with Machinima? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The website. Yes, Mission of the website, and they have YouTube channels for inside gaming and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Uh, one of my good friends, uh, Stephen Lunsford, he played the Red Common Raider, Dra- Common Rider Dragon Knight in the American version, and he now works for Machinima, which has now been purchased by WB. So kind of he worked for WB. Oh, anyway, so uh, <laughs> putting together a um, a web series, which may hopefully at some point be pitched potentially to Netflix or whatever. It's called uh, Rainbow Sixers. So are you familiar with the game Rainbow Six Siege? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's so an it's, older one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of based off of that. Like a bunch of friends are playing games. Then when we play the game, we're like those actual characters. And so we're shooting a couple episodes for that and uh, just trying to gain momentum. And then on the side, pilot season's just starting up right now. So you're going to hit the uh, pilot circuit hopefully in the next few weeks. Kind of during December and January, it goes dead. Um, everyone goes on vacation and to the Sundance Festival. And, so nothing has been happening at that moment, but I've been auditioning since Power Rangers still. I booked a couple like modeling jobs and gotten really close and chemistry reads on other acting shows. So I've almost made it in other pilots. I haven't quite hit it yet, but I believe everything happens right when it's supposed to. So like Power Rangers, I didn't get it the first time, you know, and at the time it felt horrible. And then I got Dino Charge, which to me I felt was a blessing in disguise. So to keep myself busy, like I teach yoga part time, my personal train part time, I teach hand balancing a lot. Um, I volunteer at the youth circus I was talking about. So I'm not, I'm in a class and then I teach a class. And then uh, I train myself like, what is it, four to five hours most days a week. So I'm over 20 hours working out, training a skill. And then, uh, yeah, just, you know, reading a lot, you know, Keeping doing busy. my best to stay busy at the moment. <laughs> awesome has like the viewer questions. Yeah. Yeah, you know, taking a taking a little reprieve. I graduated recently, um, so I have my degree now. So that was a lot of work. This is going to be the first pilot season. I have no school oh, wow. since I dialed down into acting. So hoping that I am uh, into you know prepping the auditions will pay off. Austin now has the viewer questions from Facebook. Sure. Oh, we do have one more question for viewer oh. questions, but some of the viewers did ask this question, so it sort of works out. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think of the movie that's coming out next month? Fun fact, I actually uh, got to audition for that movie. I don't think they would have let me get the job because I was already a Power Ranger. Because Yoshi, oh. I think they denied from auditioning because he was already a Power Ranger, but somehow <laughs> I slipped through the cracks. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I auditioned for uh, the Black Ranger, uh, for Zach. So, oh, was, wow. And so, I mean, going from the audition, like I was like, there's no way they're going to hire me. Obviously, they didn't. But uh, it was, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm hoping, you know, like Brian Cranston's in it. You know, you have big names. And Brian Cranston being from the original voice of monsters and things. That's just, again, coming full circle. A lot of people got their start in Power Rangers. I mean, the star of iZombie was a Power Ranger, you know. Um, the RPM Red was in Jessica Jones is one of the stars. And people think Power Rangers just fade away. But it depends on the individual and how motivated they are. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping the best for the next cast in the movie. You know, I want it to be good. I like Power Rangers, so I'm hoping. It's one of those things, like, it's either going to soar or I'm afraid it's going to crash. Like, you don't know, because I haven't seen it. I I think that's with all of us as well. Yeah, yeah. So we are all are hoping. We want them to succeed. Like, we really do. Like, please do well. Yes. Come on. So I I have faith in them. I mean, you know, there are a lot of those actors are hired for other things. Like, uh, Dacker Montgomery is hired for Stranger Things. He's going to be in season two. Uh Hopefully, like, if Stranger Things liked him, I have never seen him act before, but that's a good show. So I'm hoping, like, oh, he's good enough to get that. Hopefully, it wasn't just because he was a Power Ranger, but like he's actually legitimately good. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm hoping with you guys. So. Yes. So now onto the viewer questions. Um, we have a couple of viewers saying hi from Serbia, New Zealand, and Brazil. New Zealand and Brazil and Serbia. Hello. Um, one of the questions is, what did you think when Tyler had to kiss Shelby? <laughs> <laughs> well, we only kissed on the cheek, so we never actually kissed. Well, I like, oh, we almost kissed, and then loading and approved kissing. Yeah, well, what did I, <laughs> I mean, I am married, so it's like you know, I am just when I was doing it, I was already married um, or engaged, and then I became married during the hiatus, and then came back and was married. But uh, yeah, like it, it's it's hard to it, 
certain people take that different ways. Like for me, I knew, no, it's just acting, but then other people, like it's very difficult for them because even though you're just acting, you're still physically doing something sometimes. And it's like, how do you, Oh, it's fine, honey. Like, is it though? Like, I don't know. So, <laughs> it's very yeah. awkward. Yeah. yeah. You, you look at it, you just do it for what it is. And then you're, you know, very respectful about it. Like Camille and I didn't give each other a hard time. We just did what we had to do. And you know, like, I still, it's still one of my favorite scenes when Yoshi interrupted, <laughs> like, just the way. I think I that know. was perfect. Everybody was cracking up when we saw that. I don't even remember what I said, but that was totally improv. I was like, he's like, what are you guys doing? He's like, I don't know, we're just, uh, we're just uh, looking, looking for you. There you are. Like, <laughs> I don't know what I said. And then, like, again, like I was saying, like, the further we got, they let us make up stuff. Like, I don't know if you remember the episode where we all lost our memories drinking the water when Riley yeah, was running yeah. a marathon. Mm-hmm. And I'm yeah. like, who's nerve? Like, I just... Because I read, I talk backwards, so I just like, oh, I should do something backwards. <laughs> just like a stupid thing, but it's kind of fun when they let you keep those in. Because sometimes they'll be like, no, you got to do it this way. They're like, fine, but that time they let it slide. So. <laughs> Speaking of talking backwards, can you say down and charge backwards? Kent Brown wants to know. Agrahack on it. So yes, I can. <laughs> That's silly. That's so Long cool. Like it, I can do it, so. <laughs> um, who was the biggest prankster on set? John Zickfoos would like to know. Michael. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, Adrian Chin- Chong would like to know, did you get your call to run American Ninja Warrior in LA in a couple weeks? I, well, I ran it twice. I ran it once before I was a Power Ranger, and then I ran it afterwards. I actually did better the first time. I made it to the uh, qualifier round for Venice. But uh, no, I didn't actually apply this time. I wanted to take oh. a because you have to send in a video and answer a bunch of questions online. I was like, you know what? I'm going to relax and try to focus just on acting. Like, I know I probably would have gotten on it and it would have been cool, but it's really stressful, honestly. Because, like, I'm fit and I get that, but you really have to train specifically for something like Ninja Warrior. And I broke my pinky and it's still broken. And it's kind of hard. So, um, If you had the chance to form your own Ranger team, uh, who would you want? This is from Kevin Stakely. Well, if it's like Dino Charge and I get 10 Rangers again, I mean, <laughs> if I can't use my own team again, I'm just going to throw that out there because, like, I just choose my team again. Um, you know, I would totally take Tommy. I would totally take, you know, Jason. Tommy as in Jason David Frank. So I'll jump into real names and fake names. <laughs> um, uh, Steve Cardenas, um, Zach, Tra- I don't know, the originals, they just set the groundwork. And then throwing in Time Force with that I think would be great. Um, I would take I would take Peter as well from Ninja Steel because you know he's Yoshi's brother and I feel like that dynamic would definitely uh, if I could keep my old team or not I don't know but having him is kind of like having Yoshi I guess like they're mm-hmm. related so it counts right um, who else I take Ciara mm-hmm. I would take RPM Black Ranger and I would take Jason Austin St John as the Zeo Ranger. I love that costume. Uh, it's yeah. probably my favorite Power Ranger costume, the gold and black. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I don't know. There's too many seasons. It's hard to think of all of them, but that's a good amount. I, I think, was it like seven Rangers or something? Like it's the more the normal number than the vast amount of 10. <laughs> right. I have two more questions for you. Um, this one comes from Kevin Stakely again. What was it like working with Chip Lynn? Chip is amazing. Um, basically when we all got the job, we went to Saban uh, headquarters and we got to meet Saban like just once. That was the first time we ever, and last time we ever met him. But, uh, when we were there, Chip was, he took us into a separate room and he was explaining to us the storyline and like how there's this alien keeper. And he was so passionate about it. Like his eyes were like gleaming and he was running around and like acting all the characters. And you could just tell he wanted this to be more than just you know, a, a toys pitch, you know, cause we all know like Power Rangers, look at this shiny new sword, look at this shiny new Megazord. Like we, you know, it happens. Like they're trying to do toy sales. I get that. But he actually cared about the storyline and multiple times. Um, he actually listened cause Yoshi and I being actual Power Ranger fans, not saying the others weren't, but him and I growing up, like truly, truly being Power Ranger fans, he listened to our input, you know, like, Oh, does this make sense? Or, are we bond? Is this Megazord? Does it have to be bonded to someone yet to be awakened to an energy? Like, should you, should we say a line about that? And like, he had, he always appreciated how much we cared, and he took our feedback into account. Whether he went with it always, maybe not, but he cared. Yeah. And you know, like I know the way Dino Supercharge ended. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. 
it was just, you know, it was a cool risk, I thought, to have the dinosaur still alive. It was just different. You know, there were some other options that he played with. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say him, but he didn't tell me I couldn't. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, Keeper, we almost were going to have be evil. Like, oh, wow. we were going to oh. for this random alien. But he felt like if we did that, then kids wouldn't be able to trust mentors. Oh. So, like, and I got that, but... Oh, fun fact, Keeper was played by someone who was an actual circus performer, too, in New Zealand, which I thought was cool. So oh, I went to the gym and did circus with them. So. And then, before I get to the next question, I think Carlos is yelling at you for saying that you didn't get your pinky checked out yet, or fixed yet. I, oh, okay, first of all, my parents are nurses, so I showed them my pinky, and I showed it to three different doctors, because <laughs> I trained the doctor, and the two of them were my circus, and we all agree that it's broken. But basically, they all said just to buddy tape it or put a splint on. Um, I've been buddy taping it, just not today. I it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I can still do stuff. I mean, I can bend it. It just hurts to make a fist. So no punching with my right hand at the moment. Aww. Yeah. And this last question is very important from Michael Thrasher. Do you like turtles? Do I like turtles. I do. Um, if we're talking like Ninja Turtles, I like Donatello the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turtles are cool. You know, I mean... They do their thing. They do it really slow, but they do it. So persistence, right? I don't know. <laughs> well, thank oh, you. From Ecuador too. Just throw that yeah. in the last minute. They're saying hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> yes. I didn't know that was a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you, Brendan, for coming on to Rangers Live Chat. Um, usually we ask, uh, any last words for your fans, for your viewers, anybody that's following you on social media? Any last words? Well, if you guys already follow me on social media, you know, I like to try to keep things positive a lot, you know, in the vein of Tyler and also just in mm -hmm. the vein of there's too much negativity out there. Like, seriously, if everyone, every moment you're unhappy is a moment you can never get back to be happy. So if you add all those up throughout your life, that's a lot of happy moments or a lot of missed happy moments. <laughs> So, you know, just keep pushing for what you want. Like, you know, don't feel bad if something doesn't go your way because you don't know when it's your time. Like me not getting samurai, one of the worst days of my life, I thought. Then I got Dino Charge, one of the best days of my life. So <laughs> you never know why things don't work out the way you want them to work. So just trust in, you know, doing your best 100% of every day and eventually it will pay off. Well, we thank you for joining us today. Um, sure. Again, you guys know me, Krishna, with blue hair. It might change. And as well, of course, we have Austin with a cool new setup and a new cool haircut. I didn't see the old haircut, but it looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ryan had to go, but we thank him as well. And then, of course, our special guest, Brendan. Thank you, guys. Yes. Well, I'll see you guys hopefully sometime Pasadena Comic Con. So, yes. Uh, and, yeah. us and usually we like to end the show with our goodbye wave, and then that's how we usually end the show. So we w do our goodbye wave and say bye. Bye. Bye, guys. See you guys. Thank you.